The UK economy shrank by over 20% in April, the largest monthly contraction on record, as the country spent the first four months in lockdown. Professor Michael Bengad from City University of London says despite the grim readings of figures, it's better than we expected. A lot of us were anticipating that it would have been, that it was going to be even worse. Uh, some of the forecasts had the economy contracting by as much as a third. Now, we don't really know. I mean, normally there's always a degree of error in any of these things, but because of the lockdown and all the new, Office of National Statistics is also affected by the lockdown. Uh, their contacts are affected by the lockdown. Uh, therefore, there's a great deal of uncertainty, uh, or even more uncertainty about the precision of these numbers than before. So it's going to be years before we have some sort of an idea about what really happened over the last month or two. If there is not a second outbreak, uh, it's going to be slightly worse it's going to be about two, a little bit worse than two times as bad as the Great Recession. If there is uh, a second outbreak, a second wave, uh, then we're thinking about three times as bad. That's more or less what uh, bodies like the OECD are, are predicting. Again, you know, it's important to keep in mind that, first of all, we don't have very much in the way of data. Second of all, all of our various statistical models for trying to forecast these things uh, are not built to deal with this kind of uh, a crisis. Uh, the recovery will be reasonably quick, uh, certainly at the beginning. Uh, a lot of things that have locked down that can be easily opened up will indeed open up quickly and you'll start to see rapid growth, but it's going to take several years. Uh, I'm on the more optimistic side of all of that, so I would say perhaps by the end of 2022, we could be back to where we were at the end of 2019. Professor Ben Gad discusses how the Bank of England has been aiding the economy during the lockdown. Since the start of the crisis, uh, the Bank of England has uh, bought about 200 billion pounds of bonds. About 165 of that is uh, from the government. Uh, this is essentially uh, monetary finance. Um, it's almost a, what we sometimes refer to as a helicopter drop because most of the money is being used, being then passed along. It's not really being spent directly by the government, but it's rather being passed along directly to households through the furlough scheme and things like that. So in effect, what the government is doing is running an enormous deficit and the numbers there have been gradually getting worse. Uh, we now have 11 and a half million people on uh, sort of private sector workers who are being supported by the government. Um, that's more than uh, it was anticipated initially. And so as the government's finance numbers get worse and worse, I think on Thursday, the bank is probably going to announce uh, another you know, much wider uh, bond buying scheme. While things might get back to normal eventually, Professor Bengad warns there are further hardships ahead. Kind of a view that uh, everything's going to change permanently that we will never go back to the way we were. Um, the human nature uh, doesn't change all that much. Um, if there is either uh, a vaccine or a cure, uh, or simply the virus mutates and becomes a little uh, uh, less uh, dangerous, or the protocols for treating it uh, improve, um, you know, we'll go back to sitting in restaurants, we'll go back to flying on planes, uh, we'll go back to sitting in offices, we'll go back to the way things work, but it's going to take a few years. And in the meantime, there's going to be a lot of suffering because a lot of people are going to lose their jobs. We can easily see once the uh, furlough scheme is gone, uh, unemployment ticking up well past 10%, and that's going to last at least a few months.